Hello, my friends. Diane asked me to continue our discussion of centering prayer, and the theme that I'm approaching today is centering prayer and the healing of the unconscious. I was first introduced to centering prayer by a nun at a business meeting that I went to, and she was saying to us, this form of prayer, centering prayer, don't start it if you don't want your life to utterly change. And I thought to myself, don't start it. I've, I've never heard a nun tell me not to pray. <laughs> and so um, I was intrigued with that. Uh, over the course of the years, I have been practicing this as a prayer form, and I have found it to be true that my life has utterly changed. Now, whether that would have happened anyway, who knows? But um, there are many ways of praying uh, in our Catholic tradition, and uh, this is a form that's being rediscovered. It's, it's centuries old. It might have been the form that, that Jesus used primarily when he went to a silent place to get away from everyone and to just be still and be present to his father, to his Abba. But uh, the recovery of the tradition uh, comes from this, uh, the uh, ages of St. John of the Cross and St. Teresa of Avila and, and that whole movement that seemed to um, really relish this uh, prayer form. It's a simple prayer form, but perhaps not easy, and we struggle with it, I'll uh, suggest why. It's because of what we'll be focusing on here today. Centering prayer invites us to, to sit. We can be by ourselves. We can be in the middle of an airport. Uh, we, can, we can be anywhere that, we can, that inner silence becomes the priority, but outer silence helps. So you can do it in the midst of a busy family. I've known families that just tell their children, okay, you go color now or whatever, and um, mom and dad or mom is just going to sit in the prayer room and for 20 minutes and I'll be right back with you. And that usually seems to be something that children um, understand and appreciate. In fact, we've had a lot of uh, success with just teaching children a, a form of centering prayer. It's kind of like the nun telling me, don't do this. You know, if you tell your children, now I'm going to challenge you to be quiet for 10 minutes and just and see if they can uh, do that. They'll probably want to do it just to please you or to use it as a kind of trial, you know. So however we get here, we get here. And But the first dimension of it is that we are with ourselves. It's an interior form of prayer. It's a prayer of silence. Um, it's a type of Christian meditation, different from, let's say, Buddhist meditation, which tends to concentrate on uh, breath or a type of technique. Uh, centering prayer is not necessarily something that has a technique. And the main part of it is that we choose, our intention is to be present to God. It's that simple. But to be present to God, of course, means being present to ourselves. And what do we find when we are present to ourselves? Uh, we find uh, a lot of people tell me, I just can't sit still. I can't quiet my mind. I, it's, it's impossible. I've, I'm thinking too many things. And then sometimes people think they aren't successful in centering prayer because I can't stop thinking. I've tried. And let me reassure you that, that the goal is not to stop thinking. Um, to stop thinking means that we're probably dead. <laughs> so the, the thinking process is something that alive people are, are having, experiencing all the time, uh, even when we're in a type of Christian prayer and meditation and silence. So our thoughts are always with us. Sending prayer helps us to uh, deal with our thoughts, to let go of those thoughts, to see where those thoughts are coming from, to examine those thoughts, but even to set all that aside, because that can come later after what emerges from centering prayer. Uh, but what we get in touch with in Centering Prayer, why it's, it's difficult at times, because our thoughts are going to uh, come from the unconscious, primarily. They may come from the conscious, but, um, but uh, initially it's going to come from the um, unconscious. Just correcting my spelling there. Um, all those feelings that we have when we sit by ourselves and we sit alone. Um, we start feeling things, and we start getting in touch with our feelings. We're not trying to be so, we're not being so busy or trying to cover all our bases through activity. And a lot of our activity is just busyness, let's face it. And a lot of our thinking uh, really is just busyness also. So we need to uh, become comfortable with that, which is very difficult in our culture and in our society, because we think we're supposed to be doing things, we're supposed to be achieving things. And so when we're just sitting with ourselves with, and with our God, uh, in silence, um, so much is stirred up that makes it 
feel like it might be not possible to do this much longer. I'm going crazy. We can go crazy if we, when we get in touch with, and I mean that not in the literal sense, uh, when, when suddenly I, I feel what I'm feeling, my fears, my resentments, my worries, my hurt, my desires, and we might think, how is this prayer? How this is prayer is that we turn all this over then to God. Now, whatever I'm feeling during sending prayer, whatever I'm thinking, I let go of. We use a sacred word, uh, which is suggested, such as Abba or love or something. And when we find ourselves thinking or we find ourselves feeling, that's often what we miss when we are trying to uh, share with people how to do centering prayer. It's about our feelings, too. And so as feelings emerge, we, we sense what that is and we let that go. Also, we turn it over to God. So there we are with ourselves, with God. There we are. And what's going to emerge emerges. And, and what I do with that is I, I give it to God. I give my whole self to God. That's what that means. Uh, including all of these unconscious fears, resentments, worries, hurts, desires. And um, I let go of my control of life. And just sitting in the chair is one of the first movements of letting go of control of my life. Uh, just remembering to get to the chair. That can be the hardest movement we make uh, in our whole lives, but in the whole day, too. There are days that go by where I can't get to the chair. I don't want to face myself. Because facing myself, being with God, means that, um, and turning it over means I'm, I'm not in control, and that uh, then things could change. So remember, if you don't want your life to utterly change, if you're perfectly happy, if you have no fears, resentments, worries, hurts, or desires, all that's going fine, then this prayer not be, may not be for you. <laughs> for many of us, though, <laughs> This is what's going on in our inner lives. And so we need the, the healing of this so that it moves from overwhelming us, it moves from controlling us through the unconscious so that we just are experiencing knee-jerk reactions to life. Uh, instead of that, instead of losing sleep uh, at night and instead of uh, this approaching our day with, with um, apprehension, uh, we gradually move uh, our, 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 sub, our unconscious, um, subconscious uh, feelings and desires and stuff um, become transformed as God touches them. Consider this. We present the bread and the wine at Mass uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit to God. What happens when we present that bread and that wine to God during Mass? It's changed. It's utterly transformed. It becomes the body and blood of Christ. Whatever is totally exposed to God is totally transformed. So as we totally expose ourselves to God, we, the possibility exists that we become transformed. Why do we want to be transformed? Again, well, we might want some help with these feelings, but we also want our joy to be complete. And we want more happiness. We want more joy. Joy is the word that's used in Scripture usually as an adjective more often than, than other words, to describe what the experience of being a, a Christian should lead to. And, and joy is this deep satisfaction, this wonder, this delight, becoming like children again, approaching our world with gratitude. That is the lifestyle of um, a Catholic Christian. The goal is also to have integrity in our lives, to have peace in our life, to have meaning and purpose. We can be very busy and not know what we're doing at all. And, we think this is what we're supposed to be doing because society tells us this, or our family influences us. We might become a little codependent on other people's nervousness or expectations. So as we bring all of this to, into the presence of God, and it's touched as the bread and wine are exposed at the liturgy, so all of this then can be touched by God. We do a lot of talking traditionally in our prayer forms in, in the Catholic tradition, and, and that's good. Uh, talking uh, helps the community to pray together when we have prayers in common. Um, and our own uh, prayer lives, even the rosary, is a type of meditative prayer, of course. We're repeating the Hail Mary, not so much to concentrate on each word of the Hail Mary, but to get a rhythm going that releases us uh, from thinking so much and being able to, to reflect on the mysteries of Christ, in other words, to encounter God uh, and, to, and to let ourselves, turn ourselves over to God that we might find more peace. So there's a lot in common between centering prayer and, and the Catholic tradition of praying the rosary. 
So as I, as I let go of all this stuff, that might be a word that I want to put in here. We, we let go. Uh, we surrender. In our culture, especially if you're a male, the word surrender is very scary. It can mean I'm not right. Um, it doesn't mean I'm giving up. Jesus talks about surrender. He says it just makes sense if there's a bigger army coming towards you <laughs> to sue for peace. Um, a bigger army than me is my, my unconscious. <laughs> and all of the demons, if you will, that can be running around in there. And uh, to, to, to discover that in the silence of centering prayer um, is, and, and to let that go, to surrender, to give that to God consciously then, so as I become conscious of my feelings and what's going on in me, I, I'm able to choose again to give that over to God. And so it's a cycle. And so as more and more becomes conscious of who I really am and who I am in relationship with God, I can more consciously uh, let go and, and surrender and move towards uh, integrity, peace, meaning, purpose, joy in my life. If you'd like more peace, more joy, more meaning in life, then centering prayer is certainly a prayer form that you might like to explore. Now, it doesn't just happen automatically. We're not doing it to try to get stuff. It's a grace from God. All prayer is a grace from God. Um, it's a gift from God. It come, prayer is what comes to, from God first. And then the second part of it is our response to that gift. Our response to that gift of God's presence in our lives is, here I am, Lord. Here I am to, uh, to, to uh, just be here with you. Let's see what happens. And I encourage anyone that's wondering about this prayer form to give it a try and see what happens. I might, I might not experience total peace or meaning or delight or joy in my life at that very moment, although certainly I might be calmed down uh, from the busyness of my day or whatever. But um, over the course of years, uh, uh, miraculous changes can occur and uh, insights um, that we bring the experience of centering prayer to live in our lives then. And we discover that, uh, as uh, St. Paul says, our lives become a constant kind of form of prayer, a constant gratitude and surrender and discovery of meaning and purpose and joy in the totality of our life. So centering prayer moves from uh, just taking that 20 minutes twice a day, start with once a day, start with 10 minutes if 20 is too daunting. Um, and, uh, and then that becomes an awareness. So what's happening here is a type of awareness, a type of attentiveness to life and, its, uh, and all of its wonder and, and all of its challenge and disappointments too. And how to cope and deal with that as a Christian uh, in, in more mature ways. Um, so I'd just like to conclude that the uh, other name for this, this prayer, this uh, fashion of prayer we call centering prayer, is called divine therapy, the divine therapy. So I'm asking God to heal me, uh, to take care of me, uh, to, to lead me and guide me, and uh, to really uh, touch uh, what's going on in my life as I deliver that to God, as I turn that over, and um, make of me a new creation. Continue your, your healing, by your healing presence, continue to transform me in my heart and my understanding and my perception of the world and, uh, and, and, and that I might move from uh, blaming and, and, and resentment and uh, criticizing and judging into, again, uh, more wonder uh, and delight and more love. Uh, when we turn our lives over to the care of God, when we surrender to God, just by sitting and being present and being still. Uh, we are trusting God then, of course. I mean, we have to have a good concept of who God is, a good experience of God. So um, maybe this would help lead us, if we haven't had that, that, this might be another avenue of leading us through this divine healing to an understanding and appreciation that God is love, and love is going to heal. It might challenge us to a degree. It, it might get us out of our compulsivity and our addictions to our negative or difficult emotions, no, no emotion is negative per se, but some are ex extremely difficult. We become addicted to those as coping mechanisms and, and, and lifestyles. But we are healed by God who is love, and that is why we call it um, the divine therapy. God doing for me what I can't do for myself. 
working at the deepest levels of my being and my spirit uh, to touch me and to transform me and to heal me, that I might touch and transform and heal others in return. God bless you.